back to you live. Joining us here, the wonderfully talented and awesome at reading and presenting and talking about books, Lily Richards. Hi. How are you? I'm good. That is great. Yeah. Yeah, and what are we talking about this week on your weekly segment about books? Because of my awesomeness at reading, mm. we're going to do a visual book. I'm oh. actually that awesome at reading. Wow. Um, this is old. I'm just going to say it. Okay. It's old. Um, but there's a, there's a big chance that you might not have heard about it. Have you heard about this book, Post Secret? Mm. Mm. No. 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 See? So it's old. I reckon maybe 2006. But oh, man, it's really old. Really old. Really it's still old. really good. And I think it's still running. There's a website that runs concordant with it. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also the book. And I remember when this, I remember when this first came into Unity. Oh, back in the day. Back in the day, yeah. And I got really excited about it because I knew quite a lot of people who would really appreciate it, so I'm, I'm guessing you might as well. So it's called Post Secret. Da -da -da. Uh, there you go. And what it is, is this guy called Frank. Great name. Yeah, Frank Warren, two first names. Two, yeah, two first names. Yep. Always dodgy. Well, Frank oh, Warren, Warren is, is sort of like a 50% surname, 50% first name. Is it? First name? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I know, I, I know quite a few people with the fur name Warren. Interesting. Yeah. Um, he... I mean, surname. Yeah. Yeah, not fur name. Yeah. Anyway. You said say fur name then, didn't you? He yeah. said it twice. said it twice. Fur name. Mm. On purpose. Fur name. Just mocking yourself in the I way like I it. said fur name. That's good. You're so time. clever we don't even know this. Exactly, I know. I just blend it straight on there and there. Thank you. Um, sure. So this guy, Frank Warren, he's not an artist. He's got no background in the arts whatsoever. His dad, family man. Mm. Um, but he had this experience that he doesn't go into, but a sort of like a midlife crisis, I guess, and around the early 2000s. Um, and what he found really helped him as a cathartic experience to get through it was doing postcard art. Really? Some story, he doesn't talk about how this happened, how out of all the things he could have done, it was postcards that he came to. Um, and he says it's sort of like trying to figure out why a joke's funny, you just don't need to, you don't need to know if it works or works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he worked with postcards and he had this idea that if it really helped him, then it might help other people. So he started handing out postcards and the instructions on the back, they had a, a postmarked back to him, so you didn't have to pay for post. Right. And he handed them out and he left them in subways and on streets. And the instructions were that you had to that you were to write a secret that you hadn't told anyone else. And it just it had to be true. And it was completely anonymous. So you weren't allowed to say who you were or where you came from. Um, and you were to make it in some way visual. Mm -hmm. So all, and this is just this kind of project that he had on the side that he thought, oh, help me, it might help other people. So he left them everywhere and they started, it took a little while to take over, but when they started to come back, they started to come back in the droves. Mm. Um, and all over the place, these um, postcards started coming in with these secrets. And the secrets are sometimes quite sort of uh, like evocative and sometimes they're really personal and yeah. other times they're really sweet and people are obviously quite artistic and they just wanted to use the medium. Yeah. Um, but so the book is this kind of really human look at the, well, the human condition. So should we, I haven't actually pre-chosen examples, so this could be a bit um, frightening. Here you go. Can you read that one? My parents think I'm checking my email when I'm reading online erotica. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you can see, I'll just, I love getting my period, that's another one. They're all, <laughs> they're all laid out like that, so you can see the postcards as they um, originally turned up. So it's a piece of, it's a work of art, but it's also like an exploration into how everyone's really flawed and everyone has these kind of perverse feelings that maybe we wouldn't normally feel comfortable sharing. Yeah. So it just makes you feel really connected. Mm. I like the sound of this, and you've got some sort of fusion idea that you're thinking here, integration with the technology, the television show. Yes, Facebook. I was. And Thank you, I'd completely forgotten that idea. No, well, I mean, well, well, so this, the whole premise of this was that postcards are, are you know, were cathartic for him. Yeah. And postcards are also great because you get them in the mail. And who doesn't love getting mail? I love mail. I love mail. Mm. Um, so, at Unity Books, we've got these postcards that were our... What, these postcards? These postcards. Designed by Anastasia Doyant, who actually works at TVNZ. Oh, convenient. Uh, it's all that's an inside where, job. That's where we work, yeah. TVNZ, yeah. Um, so, and they, lots of them are based on um, this That's the same one. theme she did, which was You Are What You Read. So these are based on like Edgar Allan Poe and Moby Dick. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, that's Anne Frank. Yeah. What does her cat t-shirt say? 
Uh, your cat right. loves your you. Your cat loves you. It's nice. And that's how low it goes. So, I'm not going to go through all of them, but what we were thinking is that if you sent in a sentence, can you explain what they have to do actually? On, is it on email? It's on email. Uh, email? You, I suppose so. What, I'm not sure. It's alright. Uh, you just send in a sentence that you think would be the loveliest thing to have on the back of a postcard that you received. So what's the nicest thing you could think of to receive written on the back of a postcard? For the people that we deem to be the best, totally arbitrarily, um, we will then send out postcards to you with something written on the back from some of the Ulive posts. Oh, look so at that. So you're going to get mail. You're definitely going to get some mail. It's going to be That's, very... I love the idea of getting mail that isn't bills. I get mm -hmm. nothing but bank statements or tax bills or... Bro, like, oh, how just... good is a tax return sometimes? No, it is awful. It's never anything but bad news and me giving them money. I've never had a good letter. The last time I got a nice letter, I, maybe I was 16, 17. Oh. Maybe we should just send one to you. Yeah. Oh, everyone send me letters. No, so what we're saying is email in to that address just something nice that you personally would like to receive on a postcard. A nice sentiment. Yeah. I gave some examples, didn't I? What were some of the examples in my email? Um, here's your email. Uh, even your letterbox is awesome. That was, I was thinking, channeling you. Or wish you were here but you're not, so I'm coming to you. Which I thought was awesome and creepy. No, I think it's just awesome. Yeah. Um, I had one. I had one in here somewhere, but I don't know where I put it now because it was some hodgepodge of, of so many. There you go. There it is. There's an example. The perfect example. You could be getting that in the mail. Imagine getting that in the mail. That would be amazing. Mm -hmm. That Not actually so would be really. awesome. I'd be so excited about getting that in the mail. And I might even get like a little bit creative and do some little pictures and whatnot. So Something you're going to leave those with us, and yep. when we receive nice sentiments from people, we'll send them we'll nice send them sentiments out. as well. Exactly. That sounds wonderful. And they'll wonderful. get an autograph thing from the TVU host. That sounds great. Kia ora. We're going to push that this week. We're going like to do that. that all this week, I think. Okay, cool. We're going to keep that on set. Uh, let's play a music video. Yes. When I say that, I mean a music video called Calgary from a band called Bon Iver. You wanted, to, you wanted me to play Calgary today, did you, Lily? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Just out of the blue. Just, uh, <laughs> just wanted me to play that, did you? Yeah. Why is that? Just like the song? So I really like that band. Yeah. I thought it was really appropriate. Hey. Been hanging out with Tim Lambert a little bit lately, have you? Let me it's explain to you what's noise. going on. I was just about to play and hit play on Calgary by Bonnie Burr uh -huh. because Lily requested it. So I thought that's a nice song to request. And imagine my surprise when I went to play it and found out it wasn't in fact Calgary, it was in fact this. Cruel, cruel joke. Sorry, Timothy, Tim, I tried. Oh, Tim was obviously in your ear saying, get Matt, tell him to play this, and I'll, I'll change it to that, so and we'll rickroll him. But you can't get one over on old Matt Gibb. No. That's something you should learn, okay? Oh, rickroll him. <laughs> so, now that I can't play your wonderful Bonnie Iver request, I'm going to absolutely do the complete opposite of a lovely, relaxing Bon Iver track. I'm going to play some Skrillex. Yeah! <laughs> 